the Let's Talk Leadership podcast. My name's Ellie Greening. And my name's Sandra Patel-Stewart. On this podcast, we will be interviewing some of the UK's greatest tech leaders. We'll be discussing war stories, battle scars, and their learnings from their journeys. Hopefully, you will pick up some great tips, learn from others' experiences, and have a good laugh along the way. Welcome to the Let's Talk Leadership podcast. This week, we're actually filming from our homes due to COVID-19. Um, we're currently on week seven of lockdown in the UK, but remaining really busy. And we're excited to be back recording um, this evening. So we are speaking to the wonderful Sid Chuck, who is the VP of Engineering for Lendico. They're a multinational company operating an SME lending platform. And the International Online Marketplace for Business and Consumer Lending was founded back in December 2013 but I believe it was probably last year recently they were acquired by ING. Hi Sid. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi Sid. <laughs> so, Happy to be back recording aren't we Sandra? Yes we are indeed. Um, <laughs> Sid, we actually met Sid um, it was about almost two years ago wasn't it when yeah. um, we ran our first tech event in Berlin um, and since then, Sid has been instrumental in helping our business grow um, in Berlin. You've really helped us grow our brand, um, develop our, our name um, in Berlin. Um, obviously, you've scaled up massively within the business that you're currently working for. Um, and thank you for all your support um, and continued support. So it's great to have you on here today. Um, so first of all, I guess... Um, with given the current situation with COVID-19, it'd be really good to understand how things are going for you at the moment in Berlin, within Landico and, and just in general, um, given COVID-19. Yeah, this is a good question. I think in the starting actually it was a bit mess actually because uh, for example, for Landico and for ING Bank, uh, we don't have any home office policy, which means we are not used to work at home. And it, it was the first time we integrate home office policy where not only one person, but the whole company is going to the home office. And now we are doing since, I would say more than a month home office. So it's not only the tech, which is mostly have always the freedom to work from home because they like the way of working is different than the business operation units, but somehow uh, we work together and we found a way of working, which means all the meetings which we have in the office are still happening through a virtual platform like Google Hangouts or Zoom or Skype business, and not only in Lendico, but also cross location. So we are also talking to people in ING Bank, which is sitting in the Frankfurt, plus also in Bucharest. And uh, with this way of working, we are aligning on the day-to-day -day meetings and also giving weekly updates to the team, because I think some more, more important in this uh, coronavirus is to be there with your team. And when they need something or also give them regular updates, what's happening mm -hmm. in the company and outside of the company. And this is what uh, an, uh, Lendico and the whole ING, we took care of this as the whole management group to give updates to its, the, to its employees, plus also giving some perks. So for example, last month only we gave like 250 euro voucher to each employee to so just give the appreciation to the uh, people who are working remote because of course it's a bit of tough challenge uh, to, to work remote where you're not that's interacting nice. with people. Yeah, yeah. That's and uh, also as in ING, we are also delivering masks to the people home actually. So just to make sure it's a, it's an appreciation plus also bit uh, motivating the people who work for us day and night. Yeah, that you're providing employee care and that, that's really good to know that, that's really nice. If this yeah. is the first time that you've really sort of worked from home then within the business, how are you finding the levels of productivity? Hmm, I would say it's, it's kind of challenging because hmm. um, it, it's kind of, I would say like a weird mix. Because on the one side, of course, it gives you the flexibility on way of working that you, you don't have to spend your time in traveling, for example. And yeah. also, uh, yeah, it's uh, like lunch breaks and things like that. So it's, it's a bit of flexibility. I would say like flexible working hours. But on the other hand, it can also be stressful because uh, sometimes uh, people don't know you're working hours, so they can just give you a call because thinking you're always mm -hmm. available, mm -hmm. and which is might be sometimes stressful because they don't know when you're taking the lunch. Because normally in the office, they know you are not in the office, which means you're not available. But yeah. to judge it from outside right now, if everybody's working from home, it's a bit challenging. But I think so we are getting there actually where we are aligning each, each individual way of working and what's our core working arts also doing the remote working. 
Yeah, and I think that's particularly the same same in the UK, really. And I think the problems that we've had a lot of the time is is, is parents who have got children. Well, Sandra, Sandra's got a young, a four year old son, haven't you? And it's been tough work doing both jobs, isn't it? Mothering and teaching and running a business yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it was particularly challenging at the start. And um, me and my husband, we were like, we had rotor systems going on. And, like, <laughs> oh yeah, logging on most evenings and. And quite, in fact, a lot of my friends that are um, parents as well, they're having to work quite late nights just to make up for the work that they're not getting done in the day. Um, yeah. So on that note, how have you found um, your working pattern? Have you, been, have, you been, do you, have you found that you've been doing more hours, less hours? I would say it's pretty much the same, but uh, I think so the focus has changed right now. So as a tech manager, I mean, of course, I have a focus to build the team and, you know, to scale the team or to scale the department, for example. Mm -hmm. But my now focus is also to motivate uh, my employers, actually, and also support them. For example, I can give you the example from the last month. I make sure that every employee will not only get the laptop from the office, but also the monitor and the keyboard and the mouse, for example, because mm -hmm. it's, it's also because, I mean, in the current situation, we are also asking them to work for us in this in this situation, which means we have to give them all the necessary tools, infrastructure, what is necessary to make sure they are still productive, actually, and also have the proper motivation in the way forward. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Fantastic. So, sorry. Um, so, do you um, tell us a little bit more about your um, role within Lendico? What you do there? Um, how your role kind of like pieces together? I think it'd be good to to tell the viewers what you do, and then we can go into a few more questions. Sure. So at Lendigo, I'd I work as VP of engineering. So mostly in ING, it's called head of IT actually, which is responsible for the tech department. And I was a more or less a delivery department, which is responsible for the delivery. So it's a, it's a big organization, I would say. So it's not a typical startup anymore because we already sold to ING, which means it's a kind of mix of startup and corporate because we have one side of your bank actually, uh, which is of course coming up with various topics like compliance, KYC, which we have to do. And on the other hand, you have to still grow rapidly. So right now we are one of the successful uh, business or SME business in whole Germany, which also means we have to grow massively. Um, also in our engineering department, right now we have 40 people. So thank you also to uh, scale or help us to grow the department massively in like last five months. Um, Thanks so to Sarah. Sarah's done a lot of it herself. Exactly. We've got a girl that works for us um, called Sarah James and she runs the Berlin division and she's done yeah. a fantastic job. Exactly. I mean, I like working with uh, her actually because it's been, I think, the three years or near about three years I'm working with her because it's just, you can just give her a call. Actually, you don't have to write emails to say, okay, sorry, I need two more positions. And then it's done actually, basically, <laughs> like next week. So, yeah, I think so it's, it's really helpful for us to grow because that, this is also one key intake or key take which we also give to our employers because right now you have seen many companies are firing people actually and there's like layoffs going on. Even big companies are uh, laying off uh, people. On the other mm. hand, uh, on Lendico side, we are growing actually. So it's kind of opposite or different uh, positions we have right now. And this is also what we give the sense to our employees that the, there is no firing actually of the employees on the basis of the Corona crisis, because it's always people see news actually, and they always have this kind of concern that what's happening in the next months actually, or what's happening with the projects. But this mm. is also, um, I believe in transparency actually with the, my tech department to make it more transparent what's going on overall company policy level or also what are the requirements we are getting from ING, for example. Yeah, well, that's really positive, isn't it? I think obviously in the UK, there's a big push on mental health and supporting your team. But I think there's so many things in, going on in the world at the moment to be anxious about. It's nice to, like, like you say, to be transparent about the situation. And there's, some, yeah. there's a, lot, a lot of, um, I guess, positivity and support within the organisation, which is brilliant. Exactly. Amazing. I think um, I think it'd be fantastic, I guess, to find out a little bit more about you. Obviously, as Sandra says, we've known you for quite a few years now, but I was uh, giving you a little bit of a LinkedIn stalk and there was a lot of stuff about your background that I wasn't aware of. So yeah. it'd be amazing if you can give the listeners, I guess, a bit of a summary of your career journey and yeah. how you got to where you are today. Yeah. I mean, I would say like uh, since um, childhood, I was always passionate about tech, actually. So when I was in high school, I know this is where I want to go uh, or build my future, actually. And mm -hmm. I, I would say I was also lucky because my passion and my job is same. So that's why I can grow actually and enhance. So I don't have to see the working hours or I don't have to see how much efforts I'm putting, actually, because it's fun for me. 
So I started, <laughs> that's, great. Well, that, that's why I did my bachelor and master's in computer science to have the whole education pattern covered actually and to learn a lot during my bachelor and master in computer science. And then I start typical, uh, like a developer job in SAP. I mean, it's a, one of the big corporate and I work in their headquarters. So I learn a lot of corporate policies and also corporate environment when I work with SAP. Um, then I was thinking, okay, to move to like a mid-level company where I can also grow much higher because of course, corporate have some pros plus also some cons in terms of your growth actually. Mm -hmm. So I was like moving different cities in Germany. So I was in Munich actually, where I was uh, responsible for like development plus also like a senior development and then move more towards the management. I would say more towards the project management where I was like implementing scrum methodology and things like that. I think so at that point of time, I was fairly uh, positive that I have a mix of both uh, tech plus uh, management background on the knowledge right now. Yeah. So I moved to Berlin to start my own company. So I run my own company. So I was like CTO, chief technical officer and the founder of the company. Yeah. So what did, what was, was the company? What did, they, what did you do? It was a digital partner. So basically we connect SMEs to B2B high tech providers. So it's a marketplace okay. you can think of. And um, of course, so that's the first company I co-founded in my whole life. So it was a Amazing. big challenge. Well yeah, plus, plus mm -hmm. eh, it was a nice journey actually because uh, you work, it's you treat this as your baby actually, and you work yeah. a lot. Plus, also we got a German government grant actually, so we don't have to like look for investors. We got uh, yeah, great. Invest, yeah, investment for the research research project kind of with the government, uh, which helped us to run the business. So we got like a lot of customers. And then over the time, like near about two years, I was like, okay, I have like now more experience about management because I was not doing only hands-on, but also growing the team, like really from the scratch because I was the only one technical guy. And then I scaled to like 10 people and also getting more into like cloud architecture and all other um, uh, things. And plus also meeting other mentors all around the world actually to see what's going on. I have to apologize for all these noise. Don't worry. <laughs> Two <laughs> dogs at home. Yeah. <laughs> we don't usually have them about. in the recording studio. We don't usually have dogs, but then also usually we record in the office. But it's nice because obviously we can record with anyone all over the world. It's more real, it. right? It's more real how we work remotely. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Do you know what? Back then I was like, the door's open, the dogs are in. I could just know they're going to start barking. What do I do? Do I stay here because it's been video? <laughs> But like you say, I think it's more real, isn't it? This is this is this is the new norm now, isn't it? So, um, yeah. and it's great because it's meant that we can get you on our podcast, and we've been wanting to get you on for a while. So, <laughs> definitely, and I think it's great because you'd be able to you gain access to people's lives, which we hope. I think within our business, we've definitely noticed this, and I don't know whether you found this um, within Lendico as well. But what we found is a lot of the the work life balance has like merged. It's kind of integrated but it means we've, we're more used to people's lives so we're we're bringing yeah. in each other into each other's homes mm -hmm. we know so much more about our staff they know so much more about us and we've kind of i think as a team we we will 100 percent come at this the other side longer yeah. and we little... found that it's brought us closer together the whole team mm -hmm. like we all know each other so much better now and we all really kind of pulling together and, and working through this situation. I think that's also the learning. For example, for lending, I was talking to the management and they say, yeah, maybe we should implement home office policy, which we never have. Because yeah. now, we, now we prove it actually that we can work from home. So it's yeah. not that difficult. And so it's kind of like learning and also the trust actually towards the management that uh, people mm -hmm. are not like, uh, you know, avoiding actually the work, but really working actually, even though they have the whole freedom actually in the home office. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think it's giving, it's giving people the trust, isn't it? And you usually find... That yeah. they're a lot more productive and, and you get a lot more from people do you have you found it difficult like motivating the team then? yeah i mean it's that's why we do still one-to-one -one actually because uh, before mm -hmm. we are thinking actually it doesn't make sense to do one-to-one -one because it's mostly like you have to see the emotion of the people actually and see how they are behaving then only you can record uh, or, or, or do the one-to-one -one sessions but uh, we, we still continue to do that uh, to make sure if there is a problem actually we should we should address and as i was mentioning actually like once in a week like a whole company participate in this management round where they can openly ask actually what what are the issues actually if they have or or if okay. something we can we can solve uh, some issues plus also in terms of exactly motivation what we did uh, recently because we found out that um, the employees cannot take vacation and normally in germany you have your vacation finish in march end so that's kind of the rule actually in every company so we extend it till september so that 
we hope that their situation will uh, get better if they can still travel. So it's kind of like also one of the motivation that you don't have to lose your holidays, which you have, for example, nice. from the last year. You don't have to lose it. You can still take it. We just extend it. Uh, for yeah, that's holidays. nice. Yeah. What they've done here in the UK is the government's recommended that you let people carry them over um, as well, which not many companies over here um, do. Because basically, if you don't use them up within that year, you, you lose them. Yeah. So, um, to be honest, though, in Germany, you've got loads of bank holidays at the moment anyway, haven't you? Yeah. 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 You've got another one coming this Friday, haven't you? Yep. You have one on Friday. You get yeah, loads I didn't realise you had another one coming up. She's like, oh, yeah, I just realised I've like got another one. <laughs> every Friday is coming in, yeah. And the weather is also getting better, so, yeah. Yeah. So, That's sorry, nice. my, um, my dog's interrupted earlier. Um, so, no you were finishing off talking about two, two years in, you'd set your own business up. Um, and then where did you go from from there? Uh, can you repeat? Sorry, your voice got break. Oh, sorry. Um, so you we um we got interrupted earlier with the dog. So you mm -hmm. said that you were two years into setting up your own business. Yeah. Um, where did you go? We didn't finish off, did we? Where Where did you go from there? Sure. So yeah, I was I was doing this business for two years, and side by side, I was also mentoring uh, people. So I okay. was uh, associated with the Thinkful, which is uh, one of the largest bootcamp in the US. So I was mentoring students oh. remotely, which also teach me the people management side because we have like, I was having the team of like 20 people actually coming from different background, like management or, or corporate actually and want to get their job into in the IT field or tech field, for example. So that's okay. the time I actually learned a lot. And of course, then there was something that we, we thought to open a business in the US actually, or to, to go to US and get the VC actually. But that time I was not willing to go to US and want to stay in Germany for a little bit longer. So that's why I thought to move to another company. And that's that's the time actually I moved towards fintech domain. So I, I thought to move to fintech like sometime in my career because my father is banker. So it somehow comes in blood. <laughs> the, the, the finance actually. So I was always like motivated towards the finance when I was in school or at home actually. So and then fintech, of course, it's combined of finance plus tech always motivates me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I joined Liquid, which is a digital asset management company, which is my previous company. Actually, I joined as a head of engineering, got promoted as VP of engineering. <clears throat> but, the, <clears throat> but the challenge was a pretty much the same that to grow the team. Uh, it's a typical challenge we have in Berlin with startups uh, uh, that we lose generation of people. And then we have to scale depending on the scaling of the business. And then I scale up the processes actually. And there I worked like near about one and a half years and also want to willing or willing to grow more and see my domains, especially in the mix of startup and corporate, because I have the experience of both uh, as I start my career. So that's why I found Lendico, which is kind of mix of both because they sold to ING, which means a big corporate. And plus they also have the startup mindset in way of working. And you can imagine there's not enough or a lot of companies who have this kind of mix actually because it's kind of special uh, to yeah. work because you can take the advantage from both sides actually and derive yeah. your way of working amazing so pretty impressive um journey there yeah. and you've you've obviously you've progressed very very quickly which is great um so i think what would be interesting to hear um i'm sure along the way you've probably experienced a number of challenges which has given you some war stories to tell, battle scars. I think it'd be really interesting to hear in a little bit more detail some examples of those situations that you've experienced along the way. Yeah, so I think so. The main experience what I have when I was having my own company, and that's kind of learning for me, is is the art of delegation. You know, so <laughs> because when I had my own company, of course, I treated this as, as my own baby, which means I don't <laughs> want anybody to touch it. So it took <laughs> everything on my shoulder, like towards the coding or towards the development of the whole application, plus the management. And as a chief technical officer, you cannot have everything on your shoulder because you have like limited time of period. So even I grow the team, but that's like to give away things actually was like kind of a bit pain actually. And this I realized over, over the time actually that, okay, I should be more delegating and instead of like handling everything on my shoulder. So that, that's, that's, that's kind of the learning, which I, of course, put in my another job, especially yeah. Lendico also, where I, structure, Sorry, where, I, <laughs> yeah, where I structure the people actually accordingly, you know. It's hard to, um, when it comes to, particularly when obviously it was your own business and like you say, your baby, it's hard to, to delegate and, and give out tasks when you, 
that you kind of almost feel like it's a control thing, isn't it? And it just yeah. makes you feel that anxious and, and nervous and like thinking, can they do it better than me or as good as me? And, you know, but it's just, it's learning to, the more you delegate, the easier it becomes. Um, exactly. Yeah. I think there's a typical problem when I also see in Berlin startups, because when I go to conference or meet other tech managers, yeah. I think it's especially like roles like head of engineering, VP engineering or chief technology officer, some sometimes company also don't understand like this person should be hands on or hands off, you know. Mm -hmm. So and I mean it's this kind of like good mix because it really depends on the company because it's like if you're like really a startup with two or three people, of course it will be hands on and then it moves towards the towards a more into delegation role actually. But mm -hmm. there are like a bunch of articles also on this exactly the same topic that okay, if chief technology officer should code or not should code or maybe yeah. come up with kind of 80-20 principle, like 80% management, 20% in still coding. But this is, this is what I also learned over the time in the management positions that exactly what I should do, which will help the company and not like only myself or, or the team, but also to make sure the company goals are achieved and the structure in the company is probably defined and the roles are also clear towards the team. So. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that we noticed quite a big difference when we started working over in the uh, German market, in particular in Berlin, is, is that, that the roles are different in England. Um, we don't really get CTO roles where they're still hands-on coding, whereas, yeah. like you say, a lot of the CTOs over in Berlin, they're still very hands-on. Yeah. yeah. Which is great because I think it's given a lot of people opportunities because there's quite a lot of younger people that are a lot of really exactly. senior level in Berlin. And we that's not as common in the UK. Yeah, I mean, that's how, how I also learn, actually, because normally, like, startups are the senior tech people, actually, yeah. and want him to be the CTO because, of course, startup, you don't need probably a lot of management in terms of tech. I mean, in the starting phase of the company, we need to build the platform and to do uh, to, to go to the market as fast as possible yeah. to prove to the, like, let's say, VC firm or the investors, actually, to get the money in in the company to scale. So that, that's, that's kind of the thing. So, but it's always interesting to see some companies, even like companies of like 40 people, some companies really want like really hands off because it's of course come from the previous experiences they have uh, with the people, uh, people working on the same roles. Yeah. Mm. I'm interested to know, do you still code? No. No. <laughs> uh, in my current company, actually, <laughs> I can tell you we are like 40 people and growing towards a 50. In yeah. tech only, then you have nine product managers. So delivery line, it's, I would say 60 people, but that's only Berlin. So if you think of Frankfurt, Amsterdam and um, Bucharest, because we are also working closely with ING different locations, mm -hmm. it's many people involved. And right mm -hmm. now, if I do hands-on, probably I will miss something on the management side. But of course, I work on my personal projects, like still I have interest. You still uh, get that urge to yeah, do the coding. <laughs> exactly, to, to find the bug and to, to, to solve it. Because um, uh, on on my free time, actually, I still mentor, not like students now, but mostly corporates, because I was now associated with Plato HQ, where you have mentors from all over the world, actually. You have also people like uh, from uh, big companies like GitHub, uh, Docker, and all the stuff. So oh. I, it's, a voluntary, it's a voluntary work, but of course, it gives you a lot of learning, because when you mentor, you also see the challenges in different company, whether it's like tech challenge or the management challenge, but you learn a lot. And I think so this is what, I'm doing side by side so that just to make sure that my knowledge is still intact. And of course, I'm a big fan of doing certification. So I'm also doing an enterprise architect certification. So bit on, I would say that's basically hands on to, to derive the enterprise uh, architect. So yeah. Oh, how do you fit all this in? How do you have the time for all this? Do you sleep? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I sleep. Actually. It's hard. I would say it's like uh, because of uh, the company which I founded actually uh, over like four or five years ago, I learned a lot in terms of time management or, or balancing the time actually and to put your efforts on the right time and the right way of working. So still mm. I'm not like, feeling exhausted actually and still being motivated to work because everything is kind of linked. So if I'm doing enterprise architect, of course I can put the learning into my company to make yeah. it more enterprise architect compliant. So everything is kind of related, I would say. I'm not doing something which is like really out of uh, my field. Yeah. Cool. And like you said earlier, I think if it's something you're passionate about, you enjoy doing it and you're going to love doing it and get it done. So yeah, yeah so you exactly. don't feel like it's a chore anyway, do you? Um, so on that note, with regards to the mentoring that you said, yeah. um, so we've spoken about this previously, um, you're doing on a voluntary basis. If any of 
our listeners, viewers, they're interested in having a chat with you, are you happy for them to contact you sure. directly? You've sure, because I'm also them. advising companies right now in Berlin, actually, because I want to put, it's just like giving back to the community, right? So you mm -hmm. learn a lot, actually, and also I'm reading articles a lot to understand what's going on and what's trends. So it's, uh, that's why I'm also advising companies, actually, in terms of like scaling the business, scaling the team, challenges like toxic atmosphere, because I was also one of the companies where you have this kind of environment and I change it. So it's like kind of a cool. yeah, learning from my past, which I will put together and also advise different companies and different people. Great, fantastic. You might be able to help us out further down the line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think um, there's definitely, obviously you've naturally really got that passion for technology, which helps drive your career, but you've progressed really well at a young age, Sid. So I, I think it would be interesting to find out a bit more background about you and what kind of gave you the grit to get to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, that's true because in my, one of the companies also age is always a factor because uh, when we have the discussion, because normally in some companies, people think if the management should be like more old actually. Mm -hmm. And then if a young manager comes in, there's also some kind of challenge because to put a trust actually takes time. Because people mm -hmm. say, okay, you have like, and this was a challenge is what I had. Like once I moved towards the management and then it's always, mm -hmm. of course, compared to my age, I was a young, young person actually taking the management role. So of course yeah. I faced this kind of challenge. Uh, but I would say like, um, it's this kind of the passion which uh, moves me towards the direction of management and also mm -hmm. the learning. Because when I was doing uh, technical roles or like hands-on development, then I was always being fan of processes like or the projects actually. I said, okay, how I can manage the project? Not only like really hands-on, because I was always thinking if you sit in front of the computer like 24 cross seven, probably you cannot learn a lot actually. You can also have to see out of the picture actually, you know, like yeah. take your time actually to understand how this project is managed. So that's kind of like I was more passionate about and I want to give a try. So that's why I moved to Berlin actually uh, to, to bid on startup road. I think so. it's also the learning which I want to, which I give to other people. Actually, if somebody wants to go to the management role, I would mm. say the best, best thing you can do is to go towards the startup because in the startup, you, you are basically jack of all trades. So mm. you're not doing only like hands-on, but you're also learning a bit of uh, management. And normally startups are like, let's say 20 to 50 people. So yeah. you will learn a lot like face-to-face -face, instead of like corporate hierarchy where you have like thousands of people and the mm. learning curve is a bit slow as compared to the startup. And I of guess course, the startups, they want you to progress quicker, don't they? Because they need you to, to do exactly, that. Exactly. It's all hands on deck, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but, think, uh, but also when I move to management, uh, this is also one key actually that you don't leave the whole coding actually. Because right now also, if I'm doing the management, I, sh I have advantage that I have a tech background. So if somebody's mm. talking about the APIs or somebody's talking about some kind of coding, actually, I'm not like fooled like in one go. Actually. <laughs> of, course, of course, I'm not doing on daily basis. So of course, the developer who's working on day to day working <laughs> is much faster. But it's, uh, yeah, it is kind of mix of both things. Yeah. I think um, whilst you're on that piece and around management, it would be good to um, find out how do you think your teams would describe your leadership style? Yeah. So, I mean, my leadership style is mostly like empowering the people down there, you know? So right now I have five team leads and two experts. So there's like seven direct reports. And that's also the learning what I got not to have too many direct reports because uh, then it's hard to manage or hard to do one-to-one. -one. So you can have a proper structure and they will manage the team. So what I will make sure that my team leads are empowered properly because it's the same learning what I was telling you is about delegation of responsibility plus also empowering them to take, to step up their game and to take the projects by their own. Because for me, of course, I can always there to support them and always back up them if there's some issues come up, but still they have to take the responsibility to, to take over the projects and also to manage the team. Because if you grow towards a hundred people, of course I cannot do one-to-one -one with hundred people. Is yeah, they, the, they are more, much closer towards the team and also can take the ownership of the things. Plus the second thing, uh, I would say the leadership style, I have more about transparency because this is also the learning what I got from the past that, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is bitter sometimes, but you cannot hide so long. So it's better to be transparent because people will always respect you that you escalated 
enough or, or, or the faster actually. So for example, if you see that there's already foreseen delay in the project, instead of just hiding actually, just be open and transparent to find a solution over it, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is kind of learning, not only towards the top management or the stakeholders, but also to the team actually. Of course, everybody make mistakes, like me as a manager also learn every day and make some mistakes, but it's, it's fine to be transparent with your team that, okay, this is what's going on and this is how we can solve the, solve the mistakes, what we have done, for example, or, or to find a solution together with the team. I think that this is what uh, the current team I have really appreciate. And also I got a feedback in my one-to-ones and also like uh, just the feedbacks from other departments that they really appreciate the transparency where mm -hmm. it's a transparency from top to down and down to top actually, because yeah. every week I also share uh, towards the management, what we are building, for example, like small, small things adds up. Like I send them, they appreciate that, don't they? Respect exactly. Yeah. So, for example, like every week, I send weekly report towards the whole company, like what we are building or what we have done or what we have achieved in this week. Of course, some people have some caution, but also get, give the sense that what we are doing, it's like it's a part of the whole company because mm -hmm. now we are scaling towards like 500 people, maybe down the lines. So, yeah. I think that the transparency yeah. is the key actually towards the success. I like I mean, that's yeah that's like I think at the end of the week that's like you've achieved something isn't it this week we've done that I mean every week sounds quite frequent that you're putting out that yeah. message like you say to the whole of the whole of the company but I think for the team that are building the products they must be really proud when that email goes out yeah yeah I mean they're proud plus also we tell them to present what they have built or time mm -hmm. to time because it's, it's also taking the credits, right? So because they build the software, of course, as a manager, you can you empower them, you support them, but the true builders are the developers. So I think this also makes sense or, or to, to, to appreciate them on like weekly meetings actually, or also make them to present uh, their, 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 their software, for example. This also help them to be more communicative actually, and also feel that appreciation actually from the management or from the people around. I think so right now, I would say the, our company's tech is becoming more dominant because of uh, this transparency we have actually, and also we are delivering the project on the timeline and IT delivery, delivery on the timeline is always a huge success because mm -hmm. IT of course is a bit of special field where you can find bugs and things like that. So it's mostly transparency, but also giving them a kind of comfort zone that if there is some issue, just escalate this and we'll, we will not doing a blame game here but we'll solve this together. But the main thing is if you find the issue, just raise your hand or just escalate this. This is also one of the key which comes with transparency. I um, love that. Love your leadership style. It's brilliant. Um, in fact, one of, one of our core values as a business is, is being open and transparent. Um, yeah, absolutely great. So you've obviously, sound like you've taken on a lot. You, um, I love the <laughs> fact that you... Um, I've got so many different fingers in different pies. You've, um, you know, always trying to learn. Um, obviously, you're doing your um, accreditation as well. How do you manage the stress of it all? I'd love to know how you keep yourself sane and healthy. Yeah. Um, I mean, stress is, yeah, it's, it's kind of the thing which you cannot, I mean, you will have it and you have to see that how you can manage it. Because I mean, if I see my daily schedules, yeah, so if you have like 10 meetings on daily basis and every meeting is like have like different agenda. And of course, people are asking you about stuff actually and there and there. I think so one principle I always follow actually, which really helped me is to, uh, if I have stress or pressure, just put that stress and pressure in that meeting room. When I come out, I don't have the stress. And this also helped my team actually, because I, I will never or never want to actually pass this stress over to the team actually because this is unhealthy and create a toxic atmosphere, you know? Mm -hmm. So then the second thing, of course, I do meditation because I'm also Reiki master. I did some Reiki, wow. actually, I, think. <laughs> I think so when wow. I was in India. I think, yeah, so I was practicing since eight years now. So I love Reiki. <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic. Yeah, so, You're a master. That's amazing. Yeah, I did the certification actually when I was in India. So I practice it like time to time to, to stay um, yeah, calm actually and to, to meditate and to also focus actually on things great wow That's so cool fantastic we actually um one of our um clients he, he's a reiki master as well and when yeah. we first went through to um 
sort of we went on lockdown in the UK he did a remote session with us didn't he Sandra mm. yeah Matty did a remote session with, and I never had it remote but I actually felt we really, didn't really understand how it worked did we at first we were like so what do we need to do and he's like nothing you'll you'll just know when it's worked <laughs> you know when I've touched you and it worked we thought we had to like dial in on zoom or something he was like no no just chill out and I'm gonna find you and I'll cut like yeah it's brilliant it's really great so that's really cool I am um, I think it'd be interesting obviously a lot of our listeners are based over in the UK you've been in Berlin for how many years did you say now uh in in um three years actually so three total years. Germany nine years because yeah. I was going to different cities in Berlin's near about three years. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be really great if you can tell us a little bit about like why Berlin's so special and um, particularly in the tech culture and the opportunities in Berlin. Cause I think there's a lot of people that would be interested to find out a little bit more about the opportunities yeah. out there. I, I think so Berlin, so because I was moving to different cities, so I have a good grasp of German market actually in different, yeah. uh, different cities, I would say, I would see Berlin is like very, very international. So there was also mm-hmm. like people used to say that you you can't learn German if you're in Berlin because there's Do you like, speak German out of interest? A bit of yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I've cleared BN, so I speak German. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you don't need to in Berlin. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everyone speak, uh, especially in tech. You know, like my whole team actually, I would say like forty people. I would say it's only two Germans. So you can see that <laughs> the diversity yeah. actually, because also it's, it's, it's really interesting to see the diversity of people because uh, in my, like, especially in the tech department, I have people from everywhere, like from every continent, actually, India, Australia, US, Egypt, like everywhere, you know? So cool. um, so, and Berlin, I would say is also like a good mix of startup. There also have some big companies, but it's like really huge amount of startups are in different industries. Like you can find startups in FinTech, you can find in e-commerce and you can find in like, yeah, uh, telecommunication or something like that so this is a r- really good market and also the job opportunities like really lot i would say because i mean of course in berlin we used to say that uh, the retention rate for employees in it is like 14 months i mean this is like a kind of the graph which means that you can imagine like how fast people change the companies mm. it's nothing about um, the culture or something is also about the opportunity how people want to grow here in in berlin and how much yeah. opportunities they have that they have the ability to move faster to different companies and uh, even though in this coronavirus crisis i see that there's like still open positions actually especially in tech in berlin and also there's a meetup happenings uh, virtual meetups where people are like asking okay if there's some somebody wants to join their company and things like that so the market is really hot i would say mm-hmm. uh, right mm-hmm. in, in berlin yeah. um and especially i would say like many investors are pulling money in in the berlin market mm-hmm. uh, what i see right now Fantastic. i mean we've obviously been working in berlin for sort of a few years now but i guess that's one thing that we we love when we go get to go over and do the events over with sarah is that it's a it's like a melting pot of culture isn't it you'll be speaking yeah. to one person from brazil one person from india china because the blue card situation yeah. um there's a really great mix of people which which must make work really interesting and good fun and like you say there isn't in the uk it's quite frowned upon if you move jobs every couple of years but Obviously, in Berlin, like you say, people think, oh, well, they must have been offered something better, um, which is really fantastic. Great. Perfect. I think it would be really good um, to finish with what you want your legacy to be. I think that's a really good thing to finish. What, 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 would, you, mm-hmm. what would you tell your younger self and what would you want your legacy to be, Sid? Yeah, that's that's interesting because uh, I have to put my all thoughts what I learned <laughs> of, <laughs> over the years into 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 some lines actually. <laughs> yeah. What is more important actually? What I want that um, yeah the people or if somebody is taking my legacy actually and to see how 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 it works or want to continue in the same path, I would say the more important what I already mentioned is is to have the structure approach or basically define the way of working because I see in like many companies the problem or, or, or the problem which I also face in the, my previous companies to define the proper way of working and to listen to the people you know it's like aspect of the people management which is also the key part because at, at, at last even though you're in tech but you're not working with machines you always work with the people and you have to mm-hmm. put the people first also uh, as, as I always mentioned because um, it, it was very astonishing actually in my past years I see that if you really trust people actually or you really put your I would say efforts in the people you can really see uh, like uh, different kind of uh, yeah, motivation from from these people actually in loyalty 
we have we mm-hmm. have like i would say like two people who are in this company since seven years it's not like they're not offered the position they offered the best position actually but their loyal loyalty towards the company is way beyond this because they trust their leaders actually and yeah. even though they're offered like many things so i think so that's this one thing which i always see that uh, if somebody wants to take over things actually or to take this as a learning path is to build the structure and to 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 like really motivate people and expect have the aspect of this people management in 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 hand actually and to see how you can empower all the people and of course then other aspects like transparency and you know way of working can always come handy actually towards this but mostly it's uh, yeah to to work with people and trust with them you know mm. yeah cool. well said <laughs> <laughs> and and then if Sandra hasn't got any questions, I've got one question left. You got anything mm-hmm. to ask Sandra? Or are you depends on your final question. My <laughs> question is, yeah, it might lead on to something else. What's what's next? What's big? What have you got going on? What are you most looking question. forward to at the moment? <laughs> yeah, I think that this is kind of always um, is my nature to to like always uh, see where I can grow because that's mm-hmm. how I like move to different com- com- uh, companies. I would say, and also. I always try to do multiple things at the same time. That's why I was studying like side by side my full time. I also mentor people actually. I also mentor refugees in Berlin to start their own business. So there's like multiple things I do to like really to see like where I can put my all efforts. So the next, I would say in my current company, of course, I want to see how the projects will deliver because what we are doing actually in Lendikus, like basically we are integrating FinTech towards the bank and this project pro- probably do this kind of things in once in 10 years, for example, like integrating the whole thing into a bank. Yeah, so which of course have like advantages uh, to us, like how you can manage the processes both in startup and um, big corporate. So that's what kind of interesting journey I would, I want to see. But the second thing is like, as I mentioned, I want to start advising more towards the, towards the companies actually, and to play an active role as advisor moving forward, which I'm already doing uh, side by side, but also I want to uh, grow more in towards that direction because I see that our last years, this kind of advising uh, things really changed my life, actually, uh, to also understand, uh, because as I said, like my whole life is around the people, actually, and also the people management. And I really feel good when I solve some kind of challenges of the people, whether it's an individual contributor or in the company in general. So that's kind of uh, the area which I'm looking to explore more. Fantastic. Cool. We'll certainly try and help you out on that note as much as possible and, and support you. Um, Fantastic. It's been really, really interesting. You've got such an impressive background and journey. I think you're going to get a lot of downloads, likes, views, listens. Um, It's been great. It's been really, really great to have you on board. I think it was really interesting learning things about you that I didn't really know. Yeah, same uh, here. (laughs) So thank you very much for taking the time um, to do a recording with us, Sid. And hopefully over the next couple of weeks, um, things will improve on the sort of COVID situation. And we're looking forward to coming over to Berlin and organising some events in the home. Yeah. Which is the future, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm we'll Berlin already. Berlin already. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure actually to talk about my journey actually. And uh, really, really good to catch, you, catch up with you guys after a long time. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Sid. Oh, enjoy awesome. your evening. Take care. Have a great evening. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Sid. Bye.